What's up YouTubers? So, Aldo SJ McLaren back with a brand new video for you here and uh, what this video is going to be about is uh, the brand new uh, CW slash uh, HBO Max Superman and Lois TV series and uh, this video is going to include the sort of history of how the show came to be and it is going to be about episode one that just dropped recently this week uh, on the CW in the States uh, me being a big Superman fan like you couldn't tell uh, I had to see that so I did watch it so for folk in the UK that haven't seen the ep episode one just yet I'm sorry, I've got to say, spoiler alert. Uh, there will be spoilers in this video about the episode. So if you don't want to know about the spoilers, switch off. <laughs> but those that do and have watched the show, uh, give me a like, comment below, subscribe and all that jazz. And uh, I'm also going to go into my future predictions of how the show is going to go uh, and this is just my opinion and that is that okay so as always strap yourselves in and just enjoy so uh where do we begin from the beginning uh several years ago when uh the Supergirl TV series starring uh, Melissa Burton uh, came around. Uh, there was many conversations going around uh, the fan base of if and when Superman was actually going to come into uh, the Arrowverse. Uh, originally Supergirl was going to just be on her own uh, Earth, her own universe, but then they did introduce the Flash and to the show, uh, Barry Allen from uh, Earth One, and it all just went from there. Uh, and super, like I say, Superman was name dropped several times in season one. Uh, by Supergirl, uh, by uh, Jimmy Olsen, who uh, was played by uh, Merbert uh, Brooks. I hope I've said his name right. If I haven't, I do apologise. Uh, and at the series finale, the last episode of season one of Supergirl, we actually thought we were finally going to see Superman. However, uh, all we got was a little CGI figure uh, and his boots. That was that was as live action as we got of Superman in the TV series of Supergirl. Uh, uh, after that episode had aired, there was a bit of backlash uh, to the producers of the show. However, the producers backlashed on that backlash and said, look, we are actually bringing Superman in. What a surprise that was. Uh, but then the rumours started around on who could step into the suit. Who could step into the suit of both being Superman and Clark Kent? You know, uh, there was rumours going around like uh, Tom Willing was coming back, uh, even though... He had left Smallville several years earlier. There was other rumors that uh, several actors were going to be Superman, but the producers of Supergirl threw us a bomb of saying, look, we have found our Superman. And that Superman, without even auditioning, that is pretty unheard of uh, for a TV series uh, for a character in a TV series uh, to go through that process of not actually auditioning for it and uh, what must have happened was 
the producers uh, of the Supergirls show looked at an actor by the name of uh, Tyler Hink Hinkelon. Sorry, I can't pronounce his name uh, properly either. So for this video's purposes, I'm just going to call him TH. Uh, so TH did not audition for Superman. The producers cast him right away. They must have seen his work from the likes of uh, Team Wolf and just thought he is our Clark Kent. He is our Superman. And the ball just started rolling from there. Uh, we seen uh, test shots of his face and then eventually we got posters uh, and pictures of him in the Superman suit and what a wonderful looking suit it was. Uh, sort of a mixture between the comics and uh, the the historical suits that have came beforehand. Uh, a little bit of, in, of the Injustice uh, video game Superman suit in there as well. All the elements all mixed together which was really really nice. Uh, so TH did come into Supergirl Season 2, uh, Episode 1 and 2, and the way it started out, uh, you saw Clark Kent speaking on the phone to uh, the chief editor of the Daily Planet, uh, Perry White, and uh, then all of a sudden you see a big screen in Metropolis because, as we all know, that's how Superman saw what was going on in the world. Uh, he was always nearby somewhere that would tell him that something was going on, uh, a disaster was going on in the world, uh, whether it be at the Daily Planet itself or on those kind of big screens in Metropolis. Uh, so we see Clark Kent running down an alleyway and doing the legendary Superman shirt, uh, Clark Kent uh, shirt, shirt rip which revealed the Superman suit and he just flew off and Superman was reborn on the television screen and him and TH and Melissa Burton just played off each other really really well uh, and like I say he was in it from episode 1 and 2 uh, but the cool thing about it as well is Superman is very he's a very uh, those that know what Superman is a very larger than life uh, character. Uh, anybody that knows anything about me knows that I am a big Superman guy, like you couldn't tell. Uh, but I am also a big Batman guy. Uh, but as a DC fan, I have never been able to, I, I've always kept them at a tie. Uh, I could never choose between Superman or Batman. I like them both equally. Uh, so anyway, like I say, Superman casts a big shadow over everybody because, I mean, let's face it, he's Superman, right? Uh, and the way that they wrote TH, uh, Superman, is that he wouldn't overshadow Supergirl because it's, it's her show, right? Which is fine. I'm completely fine with that. Up until that point, Superman had had his time and this was Supergirl's time, okay? That's the way I looked at it. Uh, but it was nice to see Superman again, live action and being who he was. Uh, so much so that he was actually in season two more of Supergirl and even in the uh, series finale of that season. Uh, which would eventually lead to him uh, becoming a part, more part of the Arrowverse's uh, crossovers. And um, we got to the third, I think the third major uh, crossover, which was called Elseworlds. Anybody that's ever seen that episode, please, or if you haven't, please go and check it out. It is a great, great uh, three-parter where you get a little bit of the bat, right? That's the old, that's a hint there. A little bit of the bat, a little bit of Green Arrow, a little bit of uh, the Flash, and you also get 
uh, Superman and Supergirl. Uh, and of course, TH comes back as Superman, but we also get uh, Betsy Tuck uh, coming coming in as Lois Lane, uh, which was a big surprise. A lot of people were speculating on who, excuse me, would be playing Lois Lane, and the very talented uh, Betsy Tuck got cast as Lois Lane. Uh, very very beautiful girl. Uh, and she just brought also a new lease of life to Lois Lane. Uh, and in the Elseworlds episode, we uh, when, when we actually get to see Oliver Queen and uh, Barry Allen go to Earth, Earth 38, where Superman, Supergirl and Lois Lane are, they're in Smallville uh, and nostalgically, and I think the producers of the episode did this just for that reason, uh, we actually got to go back to the Smallville Kent Farm. Okay, the TV series Smallville's Kent Farm is where we went to on F Earth 38. And as soon as Remy Zero's Save Me came on, oh my goodness, my heart just went into overdrive for nostalgia because uh, I am, like I say, I am a big Superman guy and Tom Willing's Smallville was a very big part of my uh, late, uh, early to late teens, early 20s and uh, it was great to see that Kent farm again. Beautiful, beautiful Kent farm. Uh, and of course Oliver Queen and uh, Barry Allen actually meet Superman for the first time. They have not met him before uh, because as we all know up until this point Superman is not on Earth 1 somehow. Uh, but anyway we'll get there. Uh, so Oliver meets Superman, uh, Barry meets Superman and Barry's all you know like we are the fans thinking oh my god we're meeting Superman. Uh, and Oliver Queen sort of buffs himself up to when he's standing next to Superman. It's kind of a thing that Batman would do, uh, which is very, very cool and very funny at the same time. And throughout that episode, we all the other Arrowverse characters get to meet Superman, and because uh, Superman comes to Earth One. Uh, but the way it comes across is as if Superman has done this before he's went to other Earths. It, it's just the way that the story in this episode, play, in this massive crossover episode plays out. It's as if Superman has done this before. Uh, and then the episode finishes up where we get to see Superman uh, both as sort of... Uh, bad guy in a black suit which in all honesty Superman looks a lot better in this black suit than he ever has done in past black suits that's that's just my opinion uh, but it was very very cool to see both the nostalgic uh, blue and red suit and the uh, solar black suit uh, which a, a version of it anyway it was very very cool to see that Superman came across very Superman in this episode, but not enough where he, you know, overshadowed the rest of the uh, stars of the episode. But what this also did was stir the pot that more of Superman was coming and more of Superman coming did happen. Uh, when Superman and Lois sort of left Earth for Argo City, uh, where Supergirl's mother was because as we all know uh, for some reason comic book writers like to bring back parts of Krypton even though Krypton's destroyed uh, but uh, they like to do this and so Superman has went to Argo to visit his aunt uh, and also to get a little bit of his home uh, of Krypton he takes Lois with him and while they are there they actually managed to conceive. So as we get to 
the next big crossover, which is a reminiscent a reminiscent of the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Of anybody that's a big comic book person, they will know what uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths is. It is basically the DC multiverse getting a reset. Everything is the same, but different, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I know that hurt my brain as well, describing it. Uh, so, as we get into the episode, there's a big, massive episode. Big, 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 huge episode. It's a five-parter. You have the, a bit of Bat, a bit of Superman and Supergirl. You get Green Arrow, you get The Flash, and you get The Legends of the Tomorrow. So it's a big, big five-parter TV film episode. Uh, as I was saying, as we get to the crisis, we see that Superman and Lois have now had a baby. And uh, he is named Jonathan after, obviously, uh, Pa Kent, uh, Superman's uh, Earth father. And uh, that was a nice little... That was a nice little, uh, re uh, nice thing, you know, to see that jo Jonathan is living on. Uh, and uh, it does happen in the comics. Uh, we see Superman and uh, Lois Lane actually having a baby. So it's nice to see that it's, got, it's happening in the Arrowverse. Uh, and when we are in this Crisis on Infinite Earth episode, uh, we actually see quite a quite a few Supermen. Uh, we see historically Tom Welling coming back, and uh, and Erica Duras. She returns as Lois Lane for like seconds, uh, and uh, we also uh, see uh, John Cryer coming in as Lo as Lex Luthor. Now. With Tom Willing's part in that episode, he sees TH and uh, Lo and Betsy Talek, Lois Lane, they meet, but uh, Lex Luthor vanishes them away with the Book of Destiny. Uh, him, John Cryer's Lex Luthor and uh, Tom Willing's Clark Kent, Superman, uh, has words with each other. But that scene ends with basically Tom Willing's book closed on his history as Superman uh, and then we get to the next Earth which is Earth 96 it is sort of like a mixture of the Donner era slash Superman Returns slash Kingdom Come Superman it's all of them mixed together uh, and the surprise that was coming when this episode was getting made as well is uh, Brendan Ralph was actually returning as Superman. Now he was already Ray Palmer on Legends of Tomorrow, but as a special, I think it was more or less a special gift to the fans to say, we are bringing that Superman back. All right. Now we meet him and we find out that he is now chief and editor of the Daily Planet. Uh, and when he eventually gets into his Superman suit, it is very reminiscent of the Kingdom Come uh, black symbol suit, which is very, very cool. Uh, and seeing Brendan Ralph done up as Superman again is, is wonderful, you know. Uh, but, of course, Lex Luthor does show up here and he ends up getting both Superman, both THE Superman man, and... Uh, Brendan Ralph Superman battling it out in Metropolis. Uh, as we go forward uh, throughout the rest of the episode, uh, everything gets reset. Uh, Spectre, Oliver Queen's version of Spectre, resets the multiverse, okay? And it's back to square one. And so every day from Supergirl and Superman's Earth, Earth 38 from this Earth and that Earth, Earth 2, everything like that is all reset and the multiverse is redone again. So we have brand new Earth Prime, we have a new Earth 1, we have Earth 2, so on and so forth again. Uh, but basically all the main cast, right, 
is all compiled onto Earth Prime now. So you have Superman, Black Lightning, Batwoman, uh, Supergirl, obviously, The Flash, uh, everybody. They are all compiled on Earth Prime now. And when Crisis is finishing, uh, Superman has been touched with by Martian Manhunter uh, to remind him of what has happened throughout Crisis, both prior and during and the finish of Crisis. And as Superman is flying through the Earth, he gets a call from Lois at asking him how he is, how long he's going to be, and she tells him, spoiler alert here, that the boys are looking forward to seeing him. You see what I did there? What I said there? The boys. Now, at the start of Crisis of Infinite Earths, Superman only had one son. At the end of it, he now has two. So Oliver Queen gave Superman a gift. <laughs> he gave him a gift of having two sons. Uh, we still have Jonathan. Okay, but now we have a Jordan and I will get to them in a few moments. Uh, which was really strange but really cool at the same time. Uh, and now that sets us up for the actual Superman and Lois episode. You still with me? <laughs> uh, have I lost anybody along this way? I hope not. Uh, so now we are in uh, Superman and Lois and uh, we start off like we have done with all the other uh, DCCW uh, shows. They reintroduce Superman. They don't need to reintroduce Superman, but they do. Uh, but the Superman and Lois show is set, it, its time frame is set from that reset of Earth Prime. So that whole time is set from that prime, from that time, okay? The whole time frame is set from that time. That's a better way of doing it. Uh, and when we get to see Superman describing how he has come to Earth, uh, meeting Ma and Pa Ken, heading to Metropolis and uh, meeting Lois Lane for the first time. Uh, and of course we get to see the twins. But for some reason, when we left the crisis episode, we thought we were seeing twin babies. No, not at all. No, we end up seeing twin teenage boys, which was kind of a surprise to a lot of the fans uh, because we thought we were going to see a continuation from the Lois and Clark days where Lois and Clark did have a babe, get given a baby at the end of the Lois and Clark days. And we thought we would now see them as growing as parents. But now the boy, the twin boys, uh, Jonathan and Jordan, are, teenage, are 14 years old and they are just exploring life now, uh, which has a complete different take on it but it's fine. We are just going to go with it and see where it takes us, okay? Now, uh, Jonathan, who is played by Jordan uh, Eccles, and uh, Jordan, played by Alex or Griffin, respect respectfully, uh, both, guy, both young men are very, very talented, uh, Jonathan is uh, the high school jock. He is doing very well at sports and everything like that. Whereas Jordan is kind of like how Superman was while he was growing up in Smallville. Very distant, very, very the opposite is what of what Jonathan is. Now, Jonathan is excelling at sports. He is very quick, very fast. So you think he has got powers. 
he does something as he's growing up where he throws a football at a tire and knocks it off and you think oh that's a suit oh he's got super strength he can do that but as the episode goes forward we know that he has now not got powers yet we know that him and jordan are kryptonian and human hybrids but we don't know yet if they have powers just yet uh but getting back to the start of the episode as superman's introducing everything uh, we see jonathan kent having his heart attack and dying so we lose him within the first few seconds of the opening credits uh the opening scene sorry of episode one and then as we go forward in episode one we lose ma kent as well martha uh which is really crazy me personally i would have liked to have seen martha kent in episode one two three maybe even all through season one to maybe you know br bring a little bit more uh normality to superman because uh, his parents always kept him grounded if that makes sense uh, in my opinion so we lose them within the, not even the first 10 minutes of the episode which was crazy uh, but also during the first part of the episode as well we see superman doing superman things of saving the world from nuclear disasters uh, we also see uh we also see a nostalgic thing from superman 3 where superman freezes water and creates a big huge ice snow cone uh, and puts out a fire basically at the uh, nuclear plant but uh, superman is very uh, is very suspicious of how it's happened and what we also see excuse me in the first half of this as well is a flashback to superman making his first save uh where if you guys remember the uh iconic action comic shot uh we get to see an updated version of that and they actually put th in a superman suit from the flesher cartoons okay if anybody remembers what the flesher cartoons and if anybody seen the uh, justice league new frontier uh film you know that superman that the symbol was black and uh, red uh, so it is i'm not sure if the, that scene of the suit in that scene was cgi'd or it was live action it looked sort of in the middle uh, but it was very very cool to see a live action version of the symbol like that uh, as we go through the episode we get reintroduced to uh, Lana Lane as well she has has a husband who is a fire marshal and he is an absolute dick uh, we always get them in a Superman uh, TV series we always get the dick of the of the series uh, him and Lois Lane clash uh, and we also get uh, introduced to uh, Lana Lane's uh, children as well uh, Lana Lane is played by Emmanuel Chrissy. Anybody that knows her, uh, she is most famous for playing opposite Adam Sandler in the uh, in the Zohan film. Uh, Don't mess with the Zohan. And uh, don't get me wrong, beautiful, beautiful looking girl. Uh, very similar dark features to what Kristen Cook had uh, on her time as Smallville. Me personally, if they were going to redo uh, Lana Lang, it would be nice to see a comic Lana Lang, i.e. a redhead, sort of similar what uh, Annette O'Toole was in uh, Superman 3. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, and we find out while we're at the Kent farm, now when we get to the Kent farm, 
if you remember me saying that it, in the Elseworlds, Smallville Kent Farm, it was that. It was the Smallville Kent Farm, but with this TV series, with the with HBO Max backing it, it has a lot more money going into it, uh, effects wise and everything like that. And they also decided to change the farm. Uh, the farm looks is much much different than what it was. Me personally, I would have kept it the Smallville farm, but that's just for nostalgia reasons for me. I will get used to that farm, you know. Uh, but as we are at the farm, and uh, we have lost, um, we are we have lost uh, Martha Kent, and we are uh, watching her funeral go down. And uh, when the boys get into an accident in the barn, uh, Superman being Superman, comes and rescues his sons, uh, but trying to hide his powers at the same time. And uh, when what has happened with the boys with that accident, lot, big, huge uh, metal pipes have landed on them, but there doesn't seem to be a scratch on them for some reason. And that's when we see, oh, wait a minute, somebody has powers, but we don't know which one has powers yet. Uh, and throughout the episode as well, uh, we get to see Superman facing off a bit against a big bad. The only thing is, we do not know who that big bad is yet. Uh, all we know is he knows Superman. And when I say he knows Superman, I mean Lex Luthor kind of knowing Superman from... Uh, finding out his secrets in Superman 2. Uh, as in he knows, knows Superman. He knows who he is. He knows where he came from. He knows his name. All of it. Uh, so as, as my understanding that uh, there is a Lex Luthor being played in this series that is not John Cryer, okay? Bear with me here. What they are doing is they're bringing Alex Luthor in from the reset, okay? So they have reset the multiverse, but this Le there, there was this Lex Luthor on Earth Prime just as John Cryer's Lex Luthor was on Earth. So a uh, Luthor is going to be this season's big bad from what I'm getting. Wow, that was hard to come out with. <laughs> uh, so we get introduced to the big bad, but we also discover the boys finally find out who their father is. Uh, they go into the barn and they discover his uh, ship, the uh, legendary ship that brought uh, Superman to Earth. Uh, Jordan touches it, he manages to take out a, a sort of a key type thing from, from the ship and uh, he brings that attention to Superman and Superman uh, takes off his glasses and uh, reveals himself to his sons and he reveals himself in a very nostalgic way uh, where he picks up a tractor like this and it's a nostalgic thing of Su it's Superman showing off that he can do what he can do uh, but what I don't like about this episode is the boys actually rebel against him they don't understand why he has held this back from them uh, but in all honesty in my personal opinion I don't know how the boys hadn't figured it out yet that their father was Superman I mean surely if they're both now 14 they would have figured something out you know uh, but as we go forward into the episode something happens where Jordan 
excuse me, where he actually develops more powers. Uh, we actually find out that he has heat vision and what an impact that heat vision made. Uh, it was really, really crazy how it happened. Uh, but we all know where heat vision comes from, is from deep down inside of anger, the emotion gets really hot and, you know, end that knows anything about Smallville, that's how it gets triggered is high heat and emotions. Uh, so we have found that one twin does have powers. We know he's invulnerable and we know he has heat vision. <coughs> Excuse me. The other twin, Jonathan, we don't know yet. All we know is that he is fast. So as we go ahead with the season, what are we going to find? Are we going to find that one brother does have powers? Are we going to find that the other brother doesn't have powers? Or is Jonathan going to get powers as we go on? I'm going to say Jordan's powers are invulnerability and heat vision and possibly strength. And I'm going to say Jonathan's powers are maybe super speed, uh, sort of similar to the Flash's powers. Uh, but we don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but uh, the episode overall ends with... Uh, all the Kent family coming together, discussing that they are leaving their life in Metropolis and restarting again in uh, Smallville. Uh, and we will just have to wait and see where we go from there. Now, keep in mind, uh, this isn't just a CW show. This is backed by HBO Max as well. So a lot of money has went into this show. It is almost the way the camera is for this show. It is being filmed like it's a film. Okay. Uh, not the typical way the CW DC shows have been filmed. So if and when a crossover maybe happens. It will be completely different to what we have seen in the past. Uh, we, I hope. Uh, I mean, hopefully Supergirl does come on the show for a little bit. As we all know, uh, Melissa Burton is leaving Smallville. Uh, sorry, uh, Supergirl. Supergirl is ending after season six. Uh, so what does that mean? Is she going to be on Superman and Lois as time goes on? Hopefully. Will we see The Flash on the show? Hope I would like to. I would, I would love it. Uh, but a couple of things that does need to happen on the show going forward, and I hope it does happen, is uh, for one thing, Jimmy Olsen needs to come into the show. Definitely needs to. Uh, Mercer Brooks definitely needs to come into the show. Uh, we know Jimmy left uh, at some point in uh, Supergirl, uh, but he definitely needs to come back. And it would be nice to see Guardian and... Uh, Superman team up for something. Uh, also, it would be nice to see Perry White come back as well, uh, for whatever reason it needs to be. Uh, it would just be nice for basically past Superman characters. I think definitely need to be in this uh, need to be in this show, whether it be in flashbacks or uh, special guest star episodes. Uh, but another thing that does definitely need to happen and I can't stress this enough, is, in my own personal opinion, Batman needs to come into this. The reason why I say that is because what we found out in Supergirl, uh, on F Earth 38, Superman and Batman have already, one met up, they have teamed up, and as far as we know, the just a form of the Justice League were on Air 38. So my big question is, during crisis, what happened to Batman?
because of Earth 38. Did he come over in the evacuation? He must have done. He must have been on these ships uh, somewhere. Uh, so what's happened to him? Has he been reset as well? Uh, as we all know, in Bat Woman, uh, Warren Christie is at the moment the face of Bruce Wayne. Uh, so is Warren Christie going to show up in Superman and Lois? I hope so. Whether he shows up as Batman or Bruce Wayne, we need to have him, excuse me, in there in some form of fashion. Maybe not in season one, you know, that might overshadow uh, Superman and Lois, but certainly going forward at some point, I do think we definitely need to have Batman in the show at some point whether it be Bruce Wayne himself or as Batman. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion, you know. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion, all right? Uh, so I'm just going to leave it here, guys. Uh, what is your thoughts on the show? Where do you see it going? Who do you think should be a big bad going forward uh, in the show? There is a lot of people to think of because remember, even though Batman has a huge rogues gallery, gallery so the Superman. Uh, Zod could come back. Uh, we know Alex Luth uh, Luthor is there. Uh, Parasite, uh, Metallo, uh, Mexic Pelerick. Ex exactly. Not hard, e not easy for me to say. Uh, but yeah, a lot of Superman big bads definitely need to come in here. And uh, I really, really have high hopes for this show. There is a lot of nostalgia in there for me. Uh, and I just, as a Superman fan, I really, really want this to do well. I want this show to do well. Uh, and I hope it does. And at the moment, TH, you are Superman. I'm sorry, Henry Cavill. I know you're out of the picture now, these things happen, but at this point in time, TH, you are definitely Superman for me. Uh, thank you very much for being Superman. Uh, you are going to be a joy to watch uh, throughout uh, season one of Superman and Lois. Uh, so, as I've said guys, what is your opinion on this episode one of Superman. Uh, comment below, let me know what you guys think, if you have seen it. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it, give me a thumbs down if you don't. By all means, it is entirely your own opinion, okay? And uh, just watch out for more coming. I am going to do this on a weekly basis. I'm going to try and uh, get more uh, reviews on future uh, Sir Man and Lois episodes so keep an eye out for them uh, but as I say as always guys stay safe stay awesome and of course good journey